Excellencies, dear participants, uh, dear friends, first of all, I have to thank you for inviting us into this Nordic family because the Baltics and the Nordics, we've been together for quite some time and it's very natural that we are together here as well. And I thank Mr. Donfried and the uh, BDF for the courtesy and for, <clears throat> for getting us together. And this is quite an esteemed audience. Um, initially, I was asked to speak of the experience of the Latvian Institute. But the Latvian Institute, we are a small sister of the Swedish Institute. Um, just to tell you a secret, half of the Institute is here in this hall. Christiane, can you wave? So this is half of the Latvian Institute. So well, we do a very important job. We promote Latvia abroad. And uh, I think one of the most successful uh, things that we've done, we've created a communication platform in Facebook where we have about half a million followers where people don't even, um, <clears throat> don't even think that it is a state talking to them. It's a very attractive uh, uh, site. The name is, if you like Latvia, Latvia likes you because Facebook is focused on pressing the button like. But I think we've not done enough because when uh, we got onto the taxi from the airport here, our cultural diplomacy, I think, has totally flopped here in Denmark because when we told that we are from Riga, the taxi driver immediately said, oh, sure, I know, the Soviet Union, Russia. So, <clears throat> now, to, but to, to get serious, um, certainly if we look at uh, how cultural diplomacy uh, has influenced the Baltic states, and in particular Latvia, we can see, uh, I, I have to say with great confidence, that we have felt the solidarity, the support of our Nordic neighbors very much. And part of the story was told by Michael Metzmork yesterday. And in our part, I can say that uh, during all elections, well, when politicians run short of arguments, and when they are asked what kind of social security system you offer, what kind of med medical system, what kind of anything you offer, they always, when they run out of, of things, you say that the Nordic one, you know, like Scandinavia. And um, also when we uh, built the country promotion, we very strongly based ourselves on the experience and on the support of the Swedish Institute. So Annika, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for always being there with your experience, also with the cultural administration models in the country, in policy sectors, exchange, networking, anywhere. Now, looking at Latvia and how we feel about what we can do in the sector of cultural diplomacy, because cultural diplomacy, as we um, <clears throat> concluded yesterday, was uh, bringing across certain values, values and principles. And uh, in that sense, Latvia is in the focus of attention. Uh, for instance, we introduced the euro at the turn of the years. And those journalists who came across to write about the financial success of how Latvia overcame the financial crisis, they couldn't but notice that Latvia Riga has to offer a lot in cultural terms, fantastic architecture, art nouveau. It's uh, a superpower in terms of musical performance and very interesting things. So now Riga has deservedly fulfilled the role of being the cultural capital of Europe this year when we had a spectacular opening. I think like no other cultural capital because we based the opening ceremony, it was not VIPs giving speeches, but it was the people of Riga and Latvia all over coming to Riga and standing in a human chain, passing over books from hand to hand, from the old library to the new building of the National Library, thus reminding ourselves and the world of the Baltic chain, an event in 1989 that really struck the world, impressed the world with the a uh, very peaceful, non-violent, and respectful demand for freedom and solidarity that the Baltic peoples presented to the world. And it worked in 89, and it worked also for our cultural year because we, we surprised the world again. It was all over the titles. 
Now, the experience that we have together developed with our Nordic friends is, I think, very successfully being handed over in official political uh, diplomacy terms and cultural diplomacy terms to our partners in the East. It's the Eastern Partnership Program because cultural diplomacy has to be focused. It cannot be very general. Our po political priority is to <clears throat> approximate Eastern Partnership countries. And this is where we find that our expertise can be useful. And this is where we pointedly try to, to expand with our presence, <clears throat> just with our mode of life, with the principles, with the values. But now, um, after yesterday's sessions, I wanted to share some of the concerns because cultural diplomacy is not the alpha and omega as we sometimes like to think and as sometimes it sounded yesterday. Um, <clears throat> we are living in very turbulent times and uh, our immediate neighbor is waging a war against another very close neighbor and we cannot pretend that we haven't noticed that. Now, um, I will not only touch upon uh, the Nordic and the Baltic experience, but let's look at Europe in general. Both the Nordics and the Baltic states, we are part of Europe, and by third countries, we are most often perceived like Europeans rather than on a regional focus. So Europe is one of the most influential soft powers in the world, and when it is reaching out to the third countries and other regions, global regions, this reach out has been, or cultural diplomacy, it has been always value-based, or it's mostly the pivot has been democracy itself, and such things as human rights, as respect towards the otherness, as the rule of law, and these are the most precious ones. But I think that since the times that cultural diplomacy has been defined, not only Europe, but the world has experienced so many changes. And look at the world now. I think it is not anymore Europocentric. Uh, so there was a time, uh, the post-Cold War period, when uh, European values were sort of taken for granted by very many third countries. Now, they are not anymore. We have to compete with our values, with our democratic principles, in, um, on a stage where countries are gaining uh, influence, they are gaining weight. And I think in these circumstances, we have to very uh, keenly remember that the impact of cultural diplomacy, like the impact of political diplomacy, very largely depends on the level of the deliverance deliverance in economic terms, financial terms, in terms of moral uh, stands, in terms of stability, political stability. This is something that we have to keep in mind whether we talk about uh, bringing you know, cultural diplomacy across to Ukraine or Belarus, or Be Be Belarus and Russia. Now, another uh, challenge that Europe at large has to, has to take is, yes, we have had several success stories, especially recently in regions and countries where historical changes have taken place. For instance, European democracy and welfare society have helped to largely to trigger revolutionary changes both as Arab Spring, the Ukrainian Maidan movement, we cannot deny that. But now look what happens when these, the impact of our cultural uh, diplomacy has gained success. Everybody is at a loss. We are not ready with post-revolution strategies. We are not ready with political diplomacy. And then to think that cultural diplomacy may be a remedy no, it cannot replace uh, ordinary political diplomatic measures, sometimes even hard power. And to be able to savor the fruits of our efforts, of our action, we have to rethink all stages of the impact of this um, cultural diplomacy. Now, the third challenge or the third <clears throat> aspect that I wanted to talk about is we mentioned the term soft power yesterday. 
and we tried to juxtapose it to cultural diplomacy. I will not theorize, but I will just say that in Latvia, and I'm, I'm not sure so much about uh, my neighbors in the Baltics, but in Latvia, the term soft power, unfortunately, has lost its neutral and positive meaning. Why? Uh, in uh, our country, it is mostly associated with the power of the Russian media in the Baltic states that for many years have tried and have succeeded in creating a completely alternative reality of public discourse. Uh, and these are the media that are certainly they are controlled by the Kremlin. But the most acute problem is, I mentioned this, that we have to compete with our values and with our contents. In Latvia, we have sometimes failed to be competitive in media contents and we have given uh, space, there is an alternative public space for the so-called Russian-speaking people who are tuned into the Kremlin media and they look at the past and at the present through the eyes of these media, not through the eyes as we see history and the present day. So for them, Latvia was not an occupied country. For them, Russia is not waging war in the Ukraine. For them, there is a global threat to Russian language and existence, and the main culprit is the Ukrainian fascists. And this is how people see life. It is black and white. So um, the term soft power is, well, we, we rather uh, prefer not to mention it. And, um, and still, are there, any, are there any solutions? Are there any good things? Um, it's, uh, in the conclusion, I can just reiterate that it will be difficult for Europe to retain its role as a fortress of democracy and peace if it doesn't deliver democratically and politically. And there is a need to rethink the instruments of spreading democracy as a value in times of crisis, in times of violence. And cultural diplomacy has to be reset probably and probably become part of a completely different kind of strategic diplomatic efforts to get our neighbors back on track of democracy and international rights. It should not, cultural diplomacy should not at any times play into the hands of the dictator, of a tyrant. For instance, in Latvia, the public is split whether to maintain cultural contacts with Russia or not, and people are half and half. Some people go to visiting performances. Some people think that these people are traitors. So it's a very sensitive issue. And the answer is not yes or no. But on the regional level, the proximity of our models of life, our values, our network components is an asset that we have to build on in the future as we are trying to brand our region and spread its values of via the cultural diplomacy channels. Thank you so much. If I have three minutes of your attention, I would like to show you a small video that we have made uh, because our cultural diplomacy will have its peak during next half year when Latvia will be the presiding country of the European Union, but we have done it with self-irony. So judge it. Thank you.